game number one of day two of the Ultimate Madden Bowl presented by PlayStation 5, our tale of the take. Two of the most prolific players in Madden history, Tyler Davis. These guys have been here before, and these guys are not going to shy away from the spotlight. Two guys that have been to the finals, and when you make a list of who's at the top to get that belt, who should have a belt, these two at the top of the list, over 17 majors combined between them, over $500,000 career earnings. This is going to be a tremendous matchup of two of the best offensive players in the world. One's seven foot one, one's five foot six, I'm assuming. I don't really remember. I haven't seen him in person in a while. But one's really tall, one's really short. These guys are both really good. We welcome those of you watching on the EA Madden NFL Twitch and YouTube. Day two of the Ultimate Madden Bowl presented by PS5 kicks off as it will be. No surprise in those Seahawks unis. D Croft with the ball first. Daniel Mycroft, 22 years old in Dubuque, Iowa. Now Rocking that eSports scholarship, his sixth MCS major appearance, no, no, from the uh, usually from the Muckleteal, Washington area. The Madden NFL 20 Bowl runner-up, and this is somebody, uh, Ty, who knows how to come up with big plays, and you're going to hear it from him. Oh, no doubt about it. He, let, he lets his emotions uh, on his sleeve. You saw him in the Madden 20 Bowl Finals. He lost a joke. So he's had success in this exact tournament before. Labs are some of the best. That top dog Madden crew we saw fancy yesterday. Guys like Jay Wall. He's going to be very prepared for Wesley. He's been in the lab all week. Taking a look, Mutt items to watch. I think he might be looking to get some interceptions today. I could be wrong, Tyler Davis. No doubt about it. When you go up against a guy like Wesley, you need to try to slow him down. So put uh, five pick artists out there on your defense. Mike Haynes, Darrell Revis, Champ Bailey, Lawrence Taylor, and Bo Jackson. Day number one, we had plenty of drama there. Day number two, hoping for more of the same. D. Croft will have the ball first. And we see, it looks like he's coming out in the Y off trips, TD. Mm-hmm. So let's see what he sticks. He's going to rock with what he what he's known for, right? This is what D. Croft has made famous over the last five years or so. This U-Trips formation, you can find it in the Las Vegas Raiders or the New England Patriots playbook. It's been so popular the last few years, and you got to believe that D. Croft has made it that way, right? He uses motion. He has so many different route combos. He can beat press coverage. He can beat man. He can beat zone. So many different ways he can attack you out of this offense. Second down and six for D. Croft. He's got Mark Brunel at quarterback. Seen a lot of Brunel uh, ever since he was released into the game, that Legends program. Michael Thomas motions from right to left as Brunel back to pass in trouble and down goes Brunel. Eh, who else? 99. Aaron Donald in on the sack. Screaming right up that A gap there. So tough play right there for Decroft early. Didn't even get a second to pass the ball. You saw him use that motion right to left. Has four short in ability receivers out there. He pretty much motions, I would say, at least on 75% of his plays. And what the meta has been is kind of audibling around from different formations. It seems like Decroft's just going to stay in what he knows that U trips formation. Third and 12, back to pass, looking right side. He's got Tyreek Hill, possession catch in front of the defender. That's going to be a first down for the Clark University eSports athlete. There's that new Tyreek Hill, that AKA, and we talk about the short in elite abilities. He also has three short out elite abilities, and you see it come into play there on that corner out to the sideline. First and 10. Hand off to Terrell Davis over the left side of the line. He'll pick up six. Ty, we see this Mark Brunel a lot. What makes Brunel so good? He's so good because he, he allows you to get set feet lead, hot rope master, and the fearless abilities, all for only five AP. So you can pretty much fit in the best quarterback abilities, has a great release uh, at that position as well. So he's, he, that's why you see him. Pretty much everyone's going to use him today. We'll see a couple other quarterbacks, but he's going to be the, the main quarterback that we'll see in all these games. As d -Crop will use one of his first timeouts here in the first half. So we're under three minutes to play. Matter guys, if you want more information on the Mutt roster these players are using, or just some more information on the players in general, make sure you watch inside the command center. Check out all the additional information for all you guys out there just looking for a little more. Second and four, Thomas motions from right to left. Brunel the shotgun with Terrell Davis on the left side. Brunel steps up, and Brunel's going to take a seat. Second down has not been D. Croft's friend back-to-back -back sacks on second. Yeah, and something I want to point out, too. I think Wesley, over the last few seasons, has improved so much defensively. We know how good he is on offense, and you see it there. Usually you send this loop from the right side, 
But Mark Brunel is a lefty quarterback, right? So he's trying to send that heat off the left side in case there's maybe some type of rollout to the left. Love the strategy from Wesley here to defend this Mark Brunel. Another timeout taken by Decroft down to one. Uh, you can't take him to the second half, TD, but surprised to see him use so many on the first drive. Yeah, really unfortunate there. He seems like he's a little bit flustered with what he wants to do, not getting his, his hot row set in. Maybe he doesn't have the personnel he's won. So using two timeouts early, but like it's better to use him in the first half, obviously in the second half. So not going to hurt him too much. Thompson motion right to left. They're down in seven. And this time, oh, Wesley will take a timeout. Oh, yeah, he's got timeouts say. all over the place. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope d didn't call his third. That would be really wild, but... Real slow start to this game, kind of the opposite of what we expected. We expect fireworks in this matchup. Thomas getting his cardio in just behind the line of scrimmage on this play. Third time. We'll try it again. Brunel takes the snap, throws it over to Michael Thomas. He's going to be short of the first down. Marcus going to be fourth and one. For some reason, I have a feeling that Decroft isn't bringing out the punt unit. No doubt. He's definitely going for this here. Motions over that slant. Little quick throw. Looked like he might have had the corner out behind it to Tyree Kill, too, on the cut. But he elects to go underneath to the slant. Puts himself in a manual fourth and one. Is he going to go with the power? He is. And Davis will power his way to the 45-yard line. Needed a yard. Got two. Yeah, and that's the thing about Decroft's offense. This U-trips, he really loves that halfback power, that 5-6 trap, whatever you want to call it. That It has that pulling guard. And Decroft utilizes that run a lot in this formation. It pays off. He barely got it, but he didn't get enough. First and 10. Formation flips, so Thomas moves from left to right. Back to pass Brunel. Five man rush, been consistent. Kittle's wide open on the left side. And George Kittle, former Iowa Hawkeye product, will find his way to the 34 yard line. And Wesley goes all out man coverage there. And what do we know about man coverage, guys? You use those corner routes, specifically from that slot tight end position. He has that George Kittle with a short uh, elite ability there. Gets the great boost versus that man coverage for a big game. Second down and six. Balls at the 30-yard line as we near the end of the first quarter already. Very methodical drive from Decroft. Brunel takes the snap. This time four-man rush. Throws quick throw right side. It's that motion slant to Michael Thomas. Thomas gets him into the red zone. So you see Wesley continues to stay in this man coverage. And now he's so worried about that corner route to George Kittle there, the tight end position. But he kind of has to bring his user that way. And that allows that motion slant from the backside, which whoops man coverage for Decroft. So... Excellent strategy here. He's trying to manipulate him, take him to the left, to the, to the tight end, comes back to the slant. Great uh, route combos there from Decroft. Well, how about that? Blinken, you'll miss it. First quarter comes to an end. We're still scoreless in this game number one of day two. TD, interesting. I'm looking at uh, Wesley's defensive lineup. No Ted Hendricks, no Calvin Johnson. Interesting how the meta has shifted defensively. Yeah, it really has, right? And he, he does say he still have those KO abilities out there, so he's got six Defensive back with that with those knockout abilities has five pick artists as well and he oh he's post got route he's got him that's Christian Kirk there. down to the one oh, yard oh, line oh. goes Kirk twenty yards on that play first and goal. Decroft fired up about it you see that Christian Kirk on that post route with that short in elite ability lights up right there throws the pass lead and gets it down to the one yard line big time drive here for Decroft early. Uh, they're inside the one there's there's big Teddy Hendricks. Get the height out there in the goal line. Throw it up. Michael Thomas wasn't anybody on him. Looked like he got behind the defense. And the Ohio State product comes down with the first touchdown of day two. What an opening drive for Daniel Mycroft. Putting up seven. Takes a bunch of time. He moved methodically. He thought about everything. He used motion. And he punches in on the one-yard line with a, back, with a fade route to the back of the end zone. Phenomenal opening drive for Decroft. 7-0 the score. Uh, pretty much as, as good of a drive as Decroft could have asked for to kick off the game. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now it's up to Wesley to respond. So there we go. We finally get the ball moving, get those fireworks we thought. Only 7-0 early, but big time drive for Decroft. So we get to know Wesley a little bit better. Wesley Kittens, 24 years old, from Austin, Texas. His 11th MCS major appearance, six most wins in MCS history, and he does have that Madden 21 bowl belt with Henry and NBG, but he's looking for one of his own. 
Yeah, and if he wins this game, he will be the second highest earning player ever, right behind Henry. So I think a lot of people kind of sleep on Wesley. He, you know, he had success in person. Let's not forget that. He's made some Final Fours online, obviously, and since in the COVID era, he made it to a championship game. So people sleep on him. But if he wins this game, he's going to be right up there behind Henry as an all-time great with, as far as money uh, earned goes. Mer mentioned him before, TD, Mark Brunel, the quarterback of choice here in the Ultimate Madden Bowl. Yeah, the new meta in Wesley's an absolute gunslinger, so you're going to see him pretty much air it out with Mark Brunel every single play. First offensive drive for Wesley, Brunel back to pass in trouble, and that one will luckily fall to the ground. And look at that user from Decroft. So Wesley goes with that ever so popular, uh, you know, double crossing routes over the middle to stress the user. And Decroft kind of played both of them, right? He bumped the cross to the right, came back to the cross to the left. Nothing open. Phenomenal user skills from Decroft. Brunel on second and 10, looks left side. That's caught Herman Moore with the catch. The Lions legend picks up 14 and the first first down of the game for Wesley. Wesley loves that play. So he's going to come out in bunch, but he's going to audible over to tight pretty much every play. Very similar to what we saw Henry do uh, back in the ultimate wild card. So he's going to motion over. He loves this play right here, this flood play. He's going to have a corner out to the left with the, with the running back on the table route. And then on the backside, he's got that tight end angle route. So he attacks you on both sidelines over the middle. Really, really tough to defend in his tight slots. Down to two. And throw it to circle. That's Michael Thomas. Nice cut back. Oh, get sticky with it. Down to the 35 yard line. Wesley in business. And we're seeing why these two players are some of the best offensive minds in the game. Yeah, no doubt about it. And the stick work. I mean, Wesley getting busy with it. Just a simple slant route. Decroft's user was nowhere to be found. Nice pass lead. And then he gets busy. Runs back, runs around him, gets a nice game. As Davis picks up two, let's bring in one great user. User. Kind of what we expect from these two players. They're pretty strong on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Wesley, he's going to be cooking up the offensive dots. If you remember about three plays ago, he threw a corner route, and the way he used it at corner route came down and made it very tough to defend. I want to see, oh, it looked like a wide open beam he just overthrew. I want to see how D. Croft is going to defend that corner route because when people are using that corner route, throwing it the way Wesley is throwing, it could be very tough to defend. Big third and eight here for Wesley. Into the tight slots as Brunel drops back to pass. Quick throw to the left oh side. My. Tight throw wow. in coverage, and he gets the first down. Yeah, and he goes right back to the same exact play he just did. And we haven't seen the option row utilized much at all this year. And you know that the option row does a good job versus that man coverage. And that Terrell Davis out of the backfield, he has that short and elite ability on him. So you see him light up there. He does do a good job beating that man coverage. But that's the cool thing about Wesley, right? He's going to give some, give you some different looks, some different hot routes that you don't expect. He goes with the option route, and it pays off tight window, but gets it in there. 7 nothing, under the two-minute warning. As Wesley looks to cash in on this long drive, could we see a four-drive game? That's what it's sort of feeling like at this point. Next pass, Wesley absolutely screamed and shouted at. Like it's Will I Am and Britney Spears out here. Nowhere to go, third and 11. Screamer right there out of the dollar. Goes with Spinner. I'm sure the, the, the chat out there knows how popular Spinner's been this year. You get those two guys coming free off the edge. And it's a big third down 11 here for Wesley. Throws it up. He's got oh, Herman Moore. Moore holds on and is down to the two-yard line. Wesley is cooking with sauce. Who said the aggressive catch was dead? One-on-one, -on -one, six foot five. Herman Moore throws it up to him and comes down with it. So going a little old school, Nick, as far as earlier this year. We, we haven't seen a lot, a lot of that since, but he goes to it, picks up the first on a crucial third and 11. This is where it gets tough, though, inside the 10-yard line. We saw some players struggle yesterday at getting into the end zone. Does Wesley have the key? He's going to run the ball, try to get Terrell Davis, and Terrell Davis is going to drop back and lose two yards. Second to go from the four. Yeah, and, and Wesley doesn't have a goal line back 
uh, on his roster from what I what I believe in which gives you better blocking inside the five and Decroft has two goal line stuff abilities on his line so I think Decroft does have the advantage in that scenario. Play clock down to seven down to six clock running under 50 seconds left in the first half. Just gets it off. Screamer off the edge and almost took a sack. Brunel. Luckily, that one fell incomplete. Third and goal. Yeah, great defense right there. That that sharp cutting corner out uh, out of the tight end spots. Usually something you go to in the red zone. Looks like Decroft did shade outside there though. So corner out wasn't open. Pressure came home. They're down. Trips to the left side. One tight end Kittle on the right side. I don't think you're looking at that Kittle corner route initially. It's good coverage over there. There's yeah, nowhere to go. On. He'll throw this away. Fourth down and goal. Said it was tough to move the ball inside the red zone, and Wesley found that out. Looks like he's thinking about bringing the offense back out. And I don't know about the decision because he does get the ball to start the second half, and Decroft has no timeout. So I think you take your points with the way how limited the possessions have been. But he's going to go ultra aggressive, Nick. Here we go. Wesley leaves it all out on the field. Fourth down and goal needs four yards to find Pater. Only a three-man rush this time from Decroft. He's got X back in the end man. zone, it's and it's an man. easy pitch and catch touchdown. He finds George Kittle, TD. Decroft basically the first three plays brought the heat. That time he drops back in coverage, and ironically, there's no coverage whatsoever. Yeah, completely left him. And we'll get a replay of this in a second, but you see Wesley has the tight end uh, post route wide open because Decroft initially was on it, but then he was worried about the other crossing route coming to the right, so that tight end post was wide open, and Wesley comes up clutch when he needs it. Seven apiece. The aggressive play by Wesley pays off. As Decroft will take it to the 18-yard line. Take a look at this one more time. This is the third and eight conversion, finding Terrell Davis in double coverage, and then here's the touchdown. Just gets gets lost out there. Yeah, you saw he had he was on Chancellor and he was on the tight end post route, and then just jumped off him because he was worried about the other route. And the tight end post is wide open. No timeouts for Decroft. One remaining for Wesley. 30 seconds now, and down goes Brunel. That's what you can't do on a drive when you have no timeouts to take a sack. And it's very important here. Remember, we saw yesterday with Noah. I mean, Noah almost lost the game on this specific drive, right, through that pick six. So if you're Decroft, you know, you took that sack there, maybe just run the ball and go into the half. So Wesley, you know, played that perfectly. Came up clutch on the fourth down. He's going to get the ball to start the second half. Decroft's just going to run the ball here, and that should take us to the second half. Ty, for all intents and purposes, each player had one drive. It tells you that there is no margin for error in this game. Yeah, very interesting first half. Like, was this two minute quarters or five minute quarters? Like, each guy getting one possession. Something, you know, we don't see often and something you would never expect with these two. You would think it's just, you know, big play after big play, touchdown after touchdown. But that's not the case. It's kind of a slugfest, grind it out type of game as we head into the second half. We go to the second half, all square as we were when we began. One, basically one drive apiece, and it is seven to seven. Both were able to cash in with touchdowns. Yeah, it really is, and you know, you gotta give your hats off to Wesley, you know, going for it on that fourth down, big time decision, but it paid off for him, and then you get the ball to start the second half. So I do think the momentum, a little bit on Wesley's side, but both these guys right in it. We really don't know who's gonna win this one. Seven seven the score. As we see Wesley with the ball to start things off. At the 25 yard line. Back to pass. Five man rush. Really Throwing it up to Herman there. Moore. And that is caught. And that's a first down for Wes. Yeah, and you see how much confidence Wesley has and how much he trusts his repetitions, right? You know he's you know played thousands and thousands of games this year, so he knows exactly how to throw that, how he can click on the coverage he's seeing, right? Because that was tight man coverage. And most casual players probably wouldn't throw that because it didn't look open. But Wesley just trusts his abilities, throws it, clicks on, makes a nice user catch. And once again, he'll throw this one away. This time, D-Cross pressure able to force the throw away. Yeah, and I'm wondering if maybe we see these guys, you know, mixing a little bit of zone. It's been primarily just man 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 you know they they'll put like a flat zone on one side a little bit here and there but it's been all out man either blitzing or playing coverage so do they mix in a little bit of zone because I think at some point these guys are going to get used to the man coverage 
Kittle out in the flat. Maybe a yard. They'll say not even that. Third and a 10. We'll see if Decroft can get up the field. And I will say, too, you know, looking at Decroft's roster, I, I don't think I've seen anyone have more abilities on a roster than Decroft has. I, he had, like, at least 25 abilities. Like, it was insane. He, on his defense, he's got the four KOs. He's got goal line stuff, two lurkers, five pick artists. Like, he has so many abilities. And, he, and he, the main coverage that he's running looks pretty good right now against Wesley's offense. The bag, man. They're it's down bag. 10. Throws it away. Fourth and 10, can Decroft get the first stop of the game? West is gonna bring the offense back out on the field. Massive play in the game. Looks like West is gonna to go to his favorite flood play. Yep. It's a hooky back! Side and that one is incomplete. Decroft's defense stepping up and he takes the momentum in this game and puts himself in prime position with the ball at the 36 yard line. And Decroft absolutely hyped about it and he said it perfectly. It was an absolute bag. Uh, Nothing out of open. Out of there. Come on, man. Out of there. Breaks a nice little run there. And you saw too, Wesley did motion out that running back, try to create a different look, try to create that out route behind it. But he went backside to the corner row, which was double covered. I mean, phenomenal defense from Decroft. On second and uh -huh. two, throws it up, has it made open. Mikey T to the end zone. Decroft takes the lead. <laughs> he absolutely cooked him. Hot routes to the C route, and I mean, he whooped that man coverage. And Decroft takes a little sip of the water because he's feeling good up 14-7. Kicks up, it's good. 14-7, your score. Talk about cashing in, TD. He <laughs> expeditiously found his way to the end zone off that stop. Yeah, that was big time. You come out to start the second half, you get the defensive stand, and then you go down and you get seven as we take a look at this replay. First, we got the corner out, Wesley. Double coverage, I mean, nothing open. Had to take a shot, and then look at that. You cannot get much more wide open in a competitive game on this stage. Decroft fired up about it. Well, what sort of response does Wesley have? Off the four and out? Oh my god, what are you, bro? Get a stop. Come on, man. Fled. Tough throw over the middle there, TD. That certainly could have been going the other way. Yeah, it's been a few of these now for Wesley. I mean, this, this, this man coverage for Decroft is really tightened up here in this second half. There's just nothing open. Left side, it's Herman Moore to midfield, and Wesley. Starting to work the ball down the field, and Herman Moore might have been might be his uh, go-to receiver so far in this game. It's the one thing he's had, right? That corner route too, where it's still tight coverage, but he clicks on, he makes that user catch. See if he goes back to it. Looks like he's gonna go a slant post combo. Get six underneath. That's her more five catches, 73 yards so far for Wesley's offense. Got to think he goes back to the corner out here soon. That, that Herman Moore has been his number one target. Let's see if Decroft makes an adjustment to guard it. Oh, he's got the corner out wide uh -huh, open uh -huh, and just uh -huh. straight up missed him. And, uh... I mean, he was wide open, and Brunel, I don't know if he, Brunel sailed that one, or the receiver just didn't reach out and catch it. Yeah, that's a tough break. I mean, it looked like it was right on him, too, and it looks like he's going to go right back to the same place. So he's trying to set him up, right? He goes to the corner out to the left. Yeah, nice play. There's, There's Kittle, and hey, Kittle's got space. Okay, Kittle out, run to Marty. He can't and dead. Man, oh, man, coming off of the play that he was wide open and missed him. Well, he'll take this one 50 yards to the house. Yeah, starting the drive, it looked rough, but Wesley figured it out, went to some corner routes, peppered him over the middle, came back to George Kittle on the underneath route, able to, you know, get loose, take it to the end zone. So you know Wesley's not going to go, uh, you know, down without a fight, right? Hanging in there, fighting through some adversity, ties the ball game up.
Take a look one more time at what tied this game up. It's a quick throw to kill. User gets lost a little bit. And how about the breakaway speed from the 49er tight end? I know all the 49ers fans are hoping to see more of that coming up in the conference championships. Yeah, Nick, who you got in that one? Who you going with? Eagles, Niners. I don't need either fan base mad at me right now, TD. What are you doing to me? Why would you Why would you ask me this? You gotta make a pick. Um, I will go Philly for no reason other than it's. I think I think the link provides an advantage. I mean, it's one of the toughest places to go play. Um, but I listen. That game's a coin flip. You're talking about the Niners and their defense. Here's Here's the one thing that scares me about the Niners, Ty. I don't think Brock Purdy looked great against the Cowboys. Yeah, he and didn't. that's sort of the first time we've seen Purdy not look really that good at all. And that scares me. And, and you uh, could yeah, and you could argue that the Eagles defense is better and at home, so Eagles defense gets healthy. They get Jordan Davis has been back for a little bit like this. I I, I like the Eagles in that one, but if you told me the Niners win that game, I'm not I'm not shocked by that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going Eagles Bengals. All right, so it's going to be uh, 49ers Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Thanks, Mesh. Uh, Rennell picks up the first down on the scramble to the 35 yard line. Great pocket right there. Great patience from Decroft. And now you see him. He's slowing the game down. He's going to take a little bit of water. He's not in a rush because he knows he has that one stop advantage, right? So now he can kind of take his time. He uses that pocket presence, scrambles with Brunel, slows the game down, now tries to make this potentially the last play of the third quarter. On the ground goes Davis, got some room over the middle, picks up about 17 on the 47 yard line. Nice run right down Broderick, we call it 18 yards. Something we haven't seen too much, Decroft known as that passer out of Utrecht, but using the run game effectively. Yeah, he does like that power, that 5-6 trap. You see it there. Now, the one weakness of Wesley's defense, right, that nickel 3-3 three, three loop defense, it's so good against the pass. But when you got to spread your line, spread your linebackers out like that, it really opens up, you know, the gap right in the middle. And Decroft taking advantage of it, hands it off, gets a huge gash up the middle for a big first down. Fours up in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. We are all squares. We take a look at the highest earning MCS players. Wesley, third all time and can move into that second place with a run here in the ultimate Madam Bowl. Uh, one of those guys, Ty, I feel like every single live final, whether it was, you know, pre pre when we had to move to the, the uh, at-home format or during the at-home format, it feels like Wesley's been in every single one. It really has, right? Ever since Madden 20, you know, he's been making runs deep into tournaments. You always think of him as like a Final Four guy, right? Always in that mix. Just trying to get over that hump and get his first ever individual belt. Second and five. Stepping up, throwing right side. Oh, Tyreek Hill. Come on, and Hill's got space. And once Hill's got That's space, you can absolutely forget about it. To the end zone goes Reed. Laser beam. From Decroft, <clears throat> Wesley looks a little shook right now. He's not sure what to do. It's been corner routes pretty much everywhere for Decroft, right? Left side, right side, slants over the middle. This time, Wesley's user goes to the left corner route, and Tyreek Hill once again wide open on that right sideline. 21-14 as Gillen kicks this one off. This will go into the end zone as we take a look. At these two players, and this replay will bring in Boogs. Boogs, this little corner route. I mean, you get that much separation with Tyreek Hill. Uh, I don't know anybody that's going to run him down. I have no chance at all of catching Tyreek once he's off to the races. The cheetah is the cheetah for a reason. So, and right now you see Decroft, he's really just taking advantage of these corner routes. Wesley's running the same adjustments pretty much every single down, where he's just coming out, putting a cloud flat on the uh, trip side of the field and really just backing up his cornerback to try to take away that short side corner route out of the play scat. And it really does do a good job of taking away that, but D. Croft is really just exposing the rest of the field. And by the way, if there's, these are two guys, if you do repetitive adjustments, these guys are gonna see that and they're gonna take advantage of it. Oh yeah, most definitely. These aren't the kind of guys where you can just run the same adjustments over and over and over again. These guys are attentive Madden players that are gonna see these they're going to see what's open down after down. They, they're really just taking those calculations, making those mental notes each down of what's happening, and they're really exposing it right now in this game. 
Third and nine for Wesley down by seven here in the fourth quarter. Under four to play. Oh, look at that angle route. Just sort of stopped him up there. Yeah. Didn't see you know, an illegal contact panel there, but I, I think the flag might have been thrown if this was the NFL playoffs. <laughs> yeah, Nick, Wesley just does not look comfortable. Right on that first down play, he went to trips and ran an RPO inside zone. You see him keep looking at the replay on his other monitor, so he, I don't think he feels comfortable you know, right now, and it's paid off in these last two plays. See if he can come up big. This is a huge play in the game. Fourth and nine. He finds Michael That's Thomas, who has been absolutely far. monstrous for Wesley so far. It's a first down. It's kind of been the story of the game for Wesley, right? d has got him bagged. First down, second down, third down. Then we've seen multiple big fourth down conversions for Wesley, and he keeps on making it happen. That team of the week, Michael Thomas. Coming up big. Boy, can you imagine Michael Thomas was healthy for longer than about five games per season? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. How good was he with Drew Brees, too? Who? I mean, he showed flashes of it this year, Ty. I mean, he had mm -hmm. some games out there. They're like, oh, right, Michael Thomas went healthy. Is one of the best wide receivers out there. Look at Kittle breaking tackles and still going. And look at Wesley taking mm. a seat. Will that come back to bite? We've seen plays like that come back to bite players. Very interesting. And, you know, the guys were talking about it at halftime. Wesley is a very aggressive player. So what he's looking to do is go down, eventually get this touchdown, and end it with a two-point conversion. So he's going to try to take all this clock now. Clock down. Now, I, Nick, I, to your point, I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, right? Because you can... You can overthink it sometimes, right? You, you know, you're so well, confident in your skills that you go down there and then you don't even score. So it, and, it's and always. And I just, a, I don't, I, I, I don't. I mean, again, far be it for me to question the person who's the third highest earning man player of all time. But my question would be, you're doing that at the 46 yard line. It's not like you're doing this at the 10 yard line. You're in the 46 yard line. You are multiple first downs away from being in goal to go range. You're down by seven. This seems early to be doing stuff like that. But then again, Wesley's Wesley. Yeah, you know, yeah, maybe you want to get down as you see another broken tackle from from Big George there. But you want to get down to like the 30, 20. Like you said, Wesley knows what he's doing. The other thing too is like if this was like a 42, 35 game where neither guy could stop each other. But you know, I'd say they're playing pretty decent defense on each other, and it's a low-scoring game. But it doesn't matter. He throws yeah. a nice route there. Well, let's let's bring in the whole crew. Let's bring in User and Boogs from our Orlando studios. User, what do you think about Wesley taking a seat there with about 2:15 to go on the 46-yard line? Ty hit it right on the head. That's the plan. He's going to try to juice this clock out, score very little time left, and go for two. And, and you know, that's the type of game style that Wesley doesn't mind playing. He's another guy that's very confident in his game and his, his two-point two conversion plays and, and just his skill, the way to execute and eliminate it's the game right Davis here. to the 15. Well, it looked pretty good there. As you see, D. Croft being smart, burning these timeouts. Yesterday, we watched Football 88. Did not burn his timeouts early. That's very smart of him. Try to save as much time as you can. Back to Davis. I think Wesley has found a look he likes here, Bugs, mm -hmm. running the ball with Terrell Davis. Oh, yeah. I mean, right now you see Decroft. He's really just parting the Red Sea. He's just saying, you know what? I'm going to spread my defensive line because he's trying to get that loop blitz off of the bunch side. But I think he's need, he needs to be more focused on the run right now because you can see it's just way too easy for Wesley. Yeah, he's trying to shoot it off that backside gap, oh. and it's just – He's not getting through at all, and that that this really puts Decroft in a tough spot now. Well, Decroft's got no timeouts. Wes is at the two-yard line, and I think that's probably best-case oh, scenario for Wesley. Takes the tackle, loses maybe a half a yard to a yard. Clock starts running, 36 seconds and counting. Yeah, you know. he's in a great position right now. That's what you need right here. Burn all the time. You still got three timeouts left. You got four downs to get six. You know, guys, too, it feels like Decroft, like, has been playing the better game, too, right? Doesn't it feel that way? And then all of a sudden now, Wesley, you know, might have a chance to, to potentially win it here on a two-point conversion. So just a wild turn of events. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Like, that's the that's the thing about Madden. That's Madden 23 for you. Madden 23 is about your ability to win close ball games. These type of situations. Can you get the clutch stop in the end? Or can you clutch up and get the clutch score in the end? That's really kind of what Madden 23 is, especially when you're playing at the very top. These guys are way too good to just blow everyone out. Second down and goal. Single back formation, lone wide receivers, Tyree Kill out to the left side. It's a handoff to Keith Byers. Good and cut, Byers man. is cut into the end up. zone. Wesley, an extra point away from tying it up. But let's that. see. It does look like he's going to bring out the kicking yeah. unit. Wow. I I'm shocked. 
I thought he would go for it. I'm very, very shocked. He's always preached. You know what? I, I'm going for two in these type of situations. He's always preached that. But right now, he's not taking it. Maybe he really want to take advantage of the overtime rules where he's thinking, you know what? I'm going to get the ball and an opportunity to win the game regardless of overtime. But it's kind of it's it's not really similar to what he's always preaching. Yeah, I mean, because you want to be honest, he hasn't stopped D. Crawl. Exactly. So if I'm him, I'm going for two. I, I don't care what the new overtime rules are. You haven't got one stop today. So this is your best chance because we already know D. Croft has got multiple stops. Like Ty said, it feels like D. Croft has dominated this game because he has dominated this game. First and 10 for D. Croft. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Looking up for a big play. Over Cheater. the top. And oh that one God. swatted away. A game-saving play <laughs> by Wes's defense. Oh, you see D. Croft. He knows it because it looked like Tyreek had a step or two on him. Wesley looks very relieved. Oh, my goodness, we got drama in the Madden Bowl. Playing dangerous. Smart decision here to back everyone out on this play. Don't worry about the blitz. Really just make sure you get your user back and don't give up a big play. Decroft will just take a seat. And much like yesterday, gentlemen, fives up in the chat. Bonus football to kick off day two of the Ultimate Madden Bowl presented by PS5. Over time action, it will be Decroft getting the ball <laughs> first. What a way, what a way to kick off the Madden Bowl. A little free extra football between two of the absolute best Madden players in the world. As these guys get prepped, get mentally ready. Playoff overtime rules, TD. This is what we like to call the Josh Allen rule. Mm -hmm. Both players will get the ball no matter what. There's no more sudden death if there's a touchdown there. Each team's going to get the ball. But, uh, Ty, I, I don't know how you handicap this one because it feels like it could go either way. Yeah, I really have no idea. Chat, who are we rocking with? One's in the chat if you're going Decroft. Two's in the chat if you're going Wesley. Now, the big question here is, Wesley has not been able to slow down Decroft's offense at all, right? Does he get out of the man coverage? What does he do? Because, you know, whether at the left side or the right side, these corner routes are just destroying his man coverage. He's got to figure out something or Decroft's just going to go easy down the field. Stepping up on second and ninth. Those at right side. Christian Kirk with the catch. And... He will be touched down after the gain of 10. 10 of 12, 159, three touchdowns. That's what we expect from D. Croft. Efficient passing. Very efficient. And same thing. Wesley does the same exact defense all game, right? It's man coverage, a flat zone on the left side, and I'm going to use her the right side. But there's just so many routes going to the right side. You can't use them all. And the corner route, once again, is wide open. Much like the first half, D. Croft using one of those timeouts early in his drive. One one apiece. This is game number one of a packed three-day schedule here in the Ultimate Madden Bowl Day 2. Brunel steps up. Got him. Oh, oh. Brunel will take his seat. Oh, my goodness. Did you guys see it? I know everyone saw it. He had square completely naked for a touchdown, and he missed him. Oh, my goodness. Opportunity missed. Second and ten. You know who did notice that? It's probably Wesley. Wesley probably thinking he got away with one there. My it's not open this time, and Decroft will throw it away third down. Yeah, Decroft's got to be absolutely sick. We take a look at it. Look at Square, everyone. Oh, my goodness. See ya. <laughs> he was as open as you and I. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. And then Decroft tried to go right back to it, but obviously Wesley, you know, had to acknowledge that. Uh, guards it. So now we got a big third and ten here. Third down. Thomas motions from left to right. Trell Davis on the right hip of Mark Brunel. Timeout taken by Wesley. Didn't like something he saw. 
Yeah, it's been, and that was Decroft's bread and butter play he was going to, right? You got the corner out to George Kittle. You come back with that motion slant. It really stresses out both sides in that man coverage. See if Wesley can make an adjustment of it. He's been trying to guard manually George Kittle. So we'll see what Decroft cooks up here. A six foot one quarterback out of the University of Washington. Calling out the plays. And now Decroft uh, will use his final timeout. These guys are locked in right now. Taking their time. Tons of hot routes and adjustments. Now the current quarterbacks coach for the Lions doing his work with Jared Goff in the Motor City. We're going to take the Clark University product to the quarterfinals. Nice throw. Left side. Christian Kirk feet inbounds. First down. Yeah, Decroft went dual corner outs. Right side, left side. Right side was covered for Christian Kirk. Just too good with that short and elite ability. Goes to the corner out on the outside there. Laser beam. Two wide to the right, one to the left. Now Thomas will create the unbalanced formation on the left side of the formation. Looks like man coverage once again as the defender follows Thomas over. Loops around, and down goes Brunel. He will actually pick up a yard on the sack, but good defense from Wesley. Yeah, and that, that's a credit to Decroft's pocket, right? He steps up every single time. So even when he gets sacked, he really doesn't lose any yardage, but finally the, the loop gets home for Wesley. He's been waiting for that pretty much all game. Hasn't come through. Comes up big there, though. Snaps with just one second on the play clock. Looking deep for a shot. He's got Kirk open, and he's got Kirk to the end zone. Decroft scores an OT. Don't throw away this offensive master class again. Think Decroft feels good about the offense he's put out on the field? He that feels great about it. A master class from Daniel Mycroft. And you heard him say it, though. He just needs one stop. So all the pressure in the world shifts to young Wesley Gittens. $25,000 on the line. Take a look one more time. Christian Kirk over the top. Too easy pitch and catch. Get a start. Don't let the Gucci game happen again. Don't throw away. He said, don't let the Gucci game happen again. These losses, they live with these players. They know oh, yeah. when they've lost and what games they've given away. And Decroft looking not to repeat the same mistake. Yeah, he, 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 you know, some, you get nightmares about those games that you let slip away when you had it. So Decroft, in his mind, he cannot let this one slip away. But will Wesley take it away from him? Now, you got to think in this situation, if Wesley scores, it, it's two-point conversion or, or go home at that point. He's going for two here. Guap drive time. I'm fired up, Nick. That's to Gucci, the ultimate kickoff. Looking not to have it happen Wait. again. There's a right oh. side. It's high like coverage. Picked off. Oh, Brian Dawkins. Yes. Decroft, you celebrate. You celebrate because you got that oh, one stop. Bad. And you're taking stop. home the dub. Daniel Mycroft gets the job done. 25000 in his pocket and a trip to San Francisco next week. And you got to love Decroft. The responsibility to take the microphone off before he stood up and celebrated. Clark University, stand up for your man, D. Crop, with the overtime victory.